Let's go through some history and context. This loom is the ancestor of every computer and smartphone on Earth. A Jacquard loom works by using a system of punched cards, where each card represents a row of the fabric being woven. The presence or absence of a hole in each card determines whether a particular thread should be raised or lowered during the weaving process. The Jacquard loom used replaceable punched cards to control what the weave would look like, and the same machine could be fed cards with different patterns punched on the card. Ironically, this is considered an important step in the history of computing hardware. The ability to change the pattern by changing cards was an important conceptual precursor to the development of computer programming and data entry. Charles Babbage, a very eccentric British inventor and mathematician, was inspired by this loom and applied the concept to his field. He wanted a machine that could do any math problem you chose for it to do, or rather programmed it to do. He proposed a machine he called the Analytical Engine, a mechanical general purpose computer. You could, similar to the loom, give the analytical engine, the hardware, instructions in the form of punched cards. These instructions are software. The holes let pins in, and the absence of holes forced other pins backwards, setting off a chain of mechanical calculations. Ada Byron, Countess of Lovelace, the daughter of Lord Byron, an English romantic poet, was working with Babbage during the development of the analytical engine. It took the daughter of a poet to see applications beyond pure calculation. She saw what Jacquard saw. The holes could represent more than just numbers. They could be patterns, music, or entire sentences. Ada said, quote, the bounds of arithmetic were outstepped the moment the idea of applying the cards had occurred. Ada published the first algorithm intended to be carried out by such a machine. Because of this, she is often regarded as the first computer programmer. During the following decades, computer science accelerated fast. In the 1940s, large and expensive computers called mainframes were developed. The huge machines could sometimes take up a whole room. Mainframes were primarily used by governments and big organizations for complex calculations. In the 1950s, the invention of transistors, a tiny electronic device that can act as a switch controlling the flow of a current in electronic circuits, made computers smaller, faster, and more reliable. The 1960s witnessed the development of integrated circuits, allowing multiple transistors to be packed onto a single chip, further reducing the size and cost of computers. The 70s saw the emergence of mini computers, which were smaller and more affordable than mainframes, making them accessible to more businesses. Graphical user interfaces, GUIs, emerged in the 70s and revolutionized computing by introducing visual icons, windows, and menus. In the late 70s and early 80s, the personal computer revolution took off with the introduction of machines like the Apple II and the IBM PC. These compact computers were designed for individual use. This made computers significantly more user-friendly and accessible to a wider audience. With the personal computer revolution, machines with a simpler interface became popular for tasks like word processing, gaming, and personal productivity, marking a significant shift in computer technology and paving the way for the modern digital age. Finally, computers were available for everyday people, or at least those who could afford them. The 1990s witnessed several significant advancements in computing technology. In 1991, Tim Berners-Lee introduced the World Wide Web, a system of interlinked hypertext documents accessible via the internet. This invention revolutionized information sharing, communication, and e-commerce. The internet became more widely available to the public during this decade, leading to increased connectivity and the popularization of email as a primary means of electronic communication. Microsoft released Windows 95 in 1995, a groundbreaking operating system that introduced significant improvements in user interface, multitasking, and plug-and-play capabilities. It became widely adopted and set the standard for future Windows releases. 
Not only had components of the GUI become synonymous with computing, but its images had found their way into other media, including print design and television commercials. It was even argued that, with the advent of the GUI, graphical user interface engineering had merged with art to create a new medium of the interface. The 1990s saw the rise of mobile phones becoming more accessible to the general public. These devices, though primarily used for voice communication, started incorporating basic features such as text messaging and simple games. The 2000s brought about several transformative changes in the world of computing. The early 2000s witnessed the rise and fall of the dot-com bubble, the speculative frenzy surrounding internet-based businesses. Despite the fact that the bubble burst, e-commerce continued to grow, with companies like Amazon and eBay becoming major players in online retail. Broadband internet became more widely available and affordable, offering significantly faster speeds compared to dial-up connections. This facilitated the growth of multimedia content, streaming services, and online gaming. The 2000s marked a significant advancement in mobile phones with the introduction of smartphones. The iPhone came out on June 29, 2007. This revolutionized mobile communication by integrating features like email, web browsing, and multimedia capabilities with a simple phone. Social media platforms like MySpace, Facebook, and Twitter emerged, revolutionizing the way people connect and share information online. Social media played a crucial role in shaping modern communication, entertainment, and digital marketing. This has been a presentation about the history of computer science that hopefully gave you some context to what computer science looks like today. Thank you for listening. The slides for this presentation are available for download so you can read them if you need to. Until next time.